Australia versus New Zealand. That's the final of the T20 World Cup. Let's talk all about that game here at Time Out with Sports Adda. Arun, two old rivals, the big brother uh, again philosophy coming in Australia versus New Zealand. Uh, your thoughts about the final? No one would have predicted this final, Akhil. No one would have predicted this final coming. Uh, I mean, heading into the tournament, it was India, it was England, it was West Indies. Uh, hey, where did Australia... Austra- I mean, truth to be told, Australia were in dismal form coming into the tournament. And though New Zealand, uh, you know, always turn up at the ICC events, they were not favourites coming. I mean, you, you wouldn't have seen them making the final, but, but hey... A uh, real good contest in the offing. Mm, well said that. Uh, and before we move on to discussing more numbers and seeing what are the kind of matchups, uh, like we had in the semi-finals, we had we have another contest here at Timeout with Sports Adda, where uh, people who listen to the show and answer correctly uh, have a chance to win Bradley signed merchandise. We got a great response to the last two uh, semi-finals. Uh, fitting games of cricket also. So, we're having that contest. We'll be announcing the question uh, during the show. So, please watch in and answer the question like the last time. All you have to do is leave a comment uh, in on our YouTube uh, YouTube channel, like, uh, like the video and subscribe to our channel also. So, that's a very simple one. Uh, okay, coming back to the final, Arun. Uh, you mentioned two teams nobody had predicted. Nobody would have predicted that they are favourites to come into the finals. But what what games uh, in the semi-finals, such high-intensity games, both the teams have managed to crack, uh, show that they have the players to play well under pressure. So, uh, both the teams are coming up really primed up for the finals, isn't it? Isn't it? Absolutely. Now, the, the interesting thing, Akhil, is, is both these teams... Never let that semi-final out of the grasp. You know, it was they were they were in control right through. The required run rate in in both the chases never really got a 13, 14, 15. That's when you kind of hit the panic button. So it was kind of a well well planned, well orchestrated chase. And credit to you know the, the finishers on both sides, Jimmy mm-hmm. Nishim, uh, you know um, Daryl Mitchell for New Zealand. Then for Australia, it was Marcus Toynis, uh, and there was Matthew Wade who finished it, of course. Now, interestingly, uh, I was working on the Australia game, Akhil. You know, the win predictor just kept, you know, uh, the pendulum good, kind yeah. of kept, you know, swinging this side, that side. Eventually, yeah. those, you know, that that Harris of the Hassan Ali drop chance, and then yeah, Matthew yeah. just polished it off. Mm-hmm. Okay, so before we head to the head to the other matchups. How do how are the teams stacked up in T20 cricket? We know that there is an intense rivalry between these two teams. Whenever they play Test cricket or ODIs, we know that uh, New Zealand are always looked down upon as the as the junior brother, if if I may call it. The Australians have always dominated them in world tournaments. So how how do the head to head stack up here? It, it like you mentioned, Akhil, Australia have always dominated this contest. Maybe that's changing in recent years, but if you look at the overall head-to-head between New Zealand and Australia, it's still Australia way ahead. Uh, mm. These two teams, I think, have met in T20 cricket. Yeah, these like these numbers tell you the story. It's 14 yeah. matches between these two teams. Australia ahead nine five uh, uh, on the head-to-head. But the interesting thing is the second line are killing T20 World Cups. These yeah. two teams have met once, and it was New Zealand who won that game. Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. So, again, Australia also in ICC tournaments and you've had, you mentioned that so many times during our, our previous chats also. In ICC tournaments, ICC, Australia just seem to find their mojo, isn't it? They just seem to find a way to reach those semi-finals, finals somehow. Uh, like we had discussed, they, not many had given them a chance before this this World Cup, but they've managed to fight players and again reach another final of an ICC tournament. Their record is, I think, the best in, in world cricket, isn't it, in ICC tournaments? Phenomenal record, Akhil. In ICC white ball tournaments particularly, there was a time when West Indies had those kind of numbers, but what's happened in the in, in last few years? Uh, the two teams who made the most ICC white ball finals are India and uh, Australia. Both have made a uh, 10 finals so far. Uh, yeah. But here's what Australia has done. Seven finals won a kill. This, this is, of course, you know, the World Cup 50 over World Cup, the ICC Champions Trophy. 
and the yeah. T20 World Cup. So 10 finals for Australia. They won seven of them, most of them in the one one day World Cup, uh, yeah. I, I, and lost three. And like we mentioned earlier at the start of the season, uh, this is a competition Australia have never won. So they mm. will be keen to you know lay hands on that trophy. Uh, just a quick reference to New Zealand's record as well. Like in four finals, New Zealand and, and England normally make the semi final, but making mm. that final is, has been kind of that last hurdle. But they made four finals, won once against India in that Champions Trophy in 2000. Yeah. Mm. So Australia, year, how... Australia, like you mentioned, they're there. Finals means Australia are there. Mm. And if you remember, 2015, 50 over World Cup final also was between these teams. There are a lot of players from that squad who are still playing uh, here. The key key guys, uh, Bold Saudi were there. Uh, Steve Smith was there. Uh, David Warner was a part. Aaron Finch was still there. So a lot of key components are still there. Maxwell is still there. Uh, and you so didn't mention he... Mitchell Stark's name, the guy who did all the damage in that first over. Final, absolutely. So again, that is that I was going to come to that point, Arun. The the opening bowlers again crucial for Australia and New Zealand both. Uh, Bolt and Saudi here, Hazel Cummins, Hazel uh, Cummins and Stark for Australia. Uh, New Zealand have been phenomenal in their spin department also, right? So Australia. Uh, and Australia, New Zealand spin versus pace also we had a nice stat. So, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, that that's the interesting matchup, Akil. Good, you brought this up early on. The the matchup really is, you know, uh, England, New Zealand's New Zealand's fast bowlers have been phenomenal. Uh, particularly Bolt and Saudi. Look at what yeah. they've done. Their economy rate across the tournament is six point four one. But the matchup is Australian batters have loved pace as well. They've scored at 9.33, Akil. We spoke up with this kind of a matchup in that semi-final. Uh, and yeah. and look, look what's happened here as well. So, this is the matchup I'm looking at. Trent, Trent Paul, Tim Saul going up against David Warner, Steve Smith, Glenn Maxwell, you know, Matthew Wade now, Marcus yeah. Stone, all of them. Uh, so, it's going to be interesting. The other side to that contest, look, Australia have struggled with spin. Mm. You know, and, and the... the Two New Zealand spinners have kind of done well. But, you know, today they've got, you know, there's Sodhi who's, who kind of brings the ball back and turns the ball back into left-handers. And there's uh, Mitchell Santner, of course, who does the same. So, it'll be interesting to see how the left-hand batters are used, how Australia use them to counter the, yeah. the two spinners in the New Zealand ranks. They've struggled. Australia but used... if there's one matchup yeah. that Australia can tactically use, it's, it's get the left-handers out. The likes of weight. I mean, just give them a license to go after them. One has been one has done well against spin, but you need one other left-hander who can who can kind of you know dominate the spinners. Mm, good point there. They've used their matchup pretty well. You're right. Left-handed. Uh, uh, they've used that pretty well. I was very also. I was very very happy to see Mitchell Marsh also striking the ball so well at number three. Uh, because like we mentioned, he's done so well for Australia when the main players were not around. He batted at number 3 and he's somehow find some, found some extra muscle around. You can see that he's stonking the ball far away with much more long consistency. Way. Yeah, yeah, and consistently. So, he's found that gear. Very impressive knock. He played in the semi-final also. And what, uh, what caught my eye in one of the stats that you have on board is the kind of strike rates also that the Australian batsmen have gone at. You mentioned that they've gone uh, well against pace, but the, the the strike rates of most of the batters has been unbelievable. Like these are perfect strike rates that Justin Langer would be very happy to have as a coach, isn't it? Yeah, this, this tournament we're talking about this tournament, Australian batters in this tournament. Uh, yeah, two things to that. Two two things to the table. Okay, look at the runs also. David Warner's way ahead, 106 runs ahead of the rest of the Australian batters. But look at that strike rate. 148. A lot of that, wow. I mean, in David Warner's case particularly, he, he's done well against pace and spin. But yeah. look at Mitchell Marsh, 142. A lot of the runs have come quicker against pace. Stoin is 137. Again, against pace. He will murder pace. Matthew Wade, we saw what he did to Shaheen Afridi. Uh, so, so, yeah, impressive strike rate. And come a big final, this is the kind of performance you want. You don't want people going at 110, 120, 130. Uh, yeah. Final comes with its own set of pressures, but mm. uh, you need those 10 extra, 10, 20 extra run, and hence, you know, 
140 150 that's the way to go very impressive but new zealand don't have that similar luxury uh, they've managed to find their way to win games conway uh, is going to be missing that game uh, he's been such a crucial cog for them in the semi final during the chase a lot of the lot of the lifting there for new zealand has been done by two people around in the in terms of strike rate isn't it uh, Daryl Mitchell in the last match and Jimmy Nisham down the order. The rest still not we we've, we've not seen them tested, chasing and like scoring at a very high rate. Uh, Guptil managed in one of the games, but not not against the top teams yet. Yeah, New Zealand, New Zealand, they've not really they've not gone at one forty, one fifty, so to say. You're right. Uh, even Williamson's numbers. I mean, if you look at that. You you kind of explained it, put it in context in, in the last game, in the semi-final. Uh, yeah. Kane Williamson going at 94 a kill. Uh, mm. Devin Conway, who will be missing uh, 108. Glenn Phillips, who's actually the finisher, who's the dasher in the team, going at yeah. 113. So so they have, they have an issue there in terms of strike rate. In a final against Australia, you cannot play at this kind of strike rate. You need to be better. Mm. Uh, but but I'm pretty sure they will change their approach today. You know they will they will motor along at 120 125 at least. Uh, you know it's not going to be a case of run the ball today tonight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Also, one component that uh, that we wanted to like bring to everyone's notice. Not many have been speaking much about him after the India match when Ish Sodhi won them won New Zealand that game. You know, but uh, Australia seems to be a team which that he favors. He seems to be finding ways to get wickets and bowl consistently to them. He so he's picked up truckloads of wickets against India. He's picked up more wickets than any other bowler against India. But he's also done one well against Australia. Now I was just looking through his numbers, Akhil. Uh, he's played nine matches against Australia, nine T20s against Australia, gone wicketless only once. And these are the wow. numbers: nine matches, sixteen wickets, average of nearly sixteen, Akhil. Outstanding wow. numbers these are. Really outstanding numbers these are. And, you know, to if you look at those numbers even more further closely, a lot of those wickets came in New Zealand in shorter grounds, in Auckland, in Christchurch, Dunedin, nice. in Wellington. So, so you know, he, he's obviously done something, you know, to, to kind of upset the Aussies. And the kind of batters he's got as well. Looking through the, he's got David Warner twice, he's got Marcus Toynis, he's got Aaron Finch on a couple of occasions, he's got... Uh, Mitch Marsh. So, it's kind of across the board. It's going to be interesting to see how, how he goes tonight. Hmm, very, very interesting. Uh, what do you make of the due factor again? Before, there's one interesting matchup that I want to talk about, the captains. But before that, uh, due factor, last game when when Australia were chasing uh, in, in the post-match interviews, they said that there wasn't much due. Uh, they, they couldn't see too much uh, water on the on the field at that time. But what, what about that that impact? I'm, I'm kind of torn, Akhil. A lot is made of the due. A lot is made of the due factor. Yes, due exists. On days, it's too much. But but these are professional sportsmen, Akhil. You cannot complain about factors which are beyond your control. You've never heard, you know, you've never ha- heard footballers say there's, you know, they play in rains, right? You never hear footballers complain about too much water on the turf. You, ne- you never hear badminton or table tennis players talk about you know, a certain breeze and because of which, you know, the either the shuttle or the ping pong ball kind of swerves at the end. So, you never hear, hear people complain. You you never hear sw- swimmers complain about, you know, the water being too cold or too, too warm. Come on, these are professional athletes. So, you've got to figure out ways to overcome that. It, it's similar to days when it's warm, right? It's trying. You drain quickly. What do you do? You drink water, right? You sweat a lot. What do you do? You try and wear a sweat sweat band, uh, sorry, a wristband. You wear a, a, a headband. So, you kind of try and avoid the sweat kind of flowing. So, you've got to overcome those conditions. It's difficult. It's challenging. But professional athletes should not be complaining about you. Also, I've been talking to a lot of people, a lot of, lot of friends, well-wishers. Or I've been pointing out to a lot of them that Chennai managed to win the Indian T20 League while defending the title in similar conditions. So, whatever whatever way the captain has to strategize, has to figure his plans, an experienced captain like Dhoni has shown that it is possible. So, whoever is giving those reasons, saying that they cannot win uh, with the due and bowling is, is not really giving a factual thing because if you're a good team, you still manage to find ways to win the, win the key matches. Uh, 
Absolutely. And the the thing that I wanted to now bring your attention to and take your thoughts is the captaincy, Arun. Very very crucial in knockout finals. Uh, these two have been leaders for a while. Aaron Finch is a respected, respected gentleman in the Australian dressing room, and obviously Kane Williamson is a darling for most cricket fans. He's been he's been loved, respected. Uh, his batting has been phenomenal for ages. But there is something which is developing with him, Arun. He's managed to get New Zealand to such important finals. He's managed to win them the championship, uh, World Test Championship, by beating a very, very top one of the top teams in the world. So he's managed to he's starting to create that niche, and I if this if he managed to win this also title, then it will be a Test Championship at one end and T20 format uh, winning captain at the other end. So it will be a phenomenal achievement. Uh, thoughts about that? What can we look forward to the leadership records for both these gentlemen? Before we talk about those individuals, I just want to throw one number which I'm really happy to have found. Look at the captaincy record. You briefly mentioned that. Astonishing numbers these are. Same number of matches as Captain Akil. Same number of matches. Same number of wins. And absolutely (laughs) therefore the same win percentage as well. 55 matches for both. 28 wins for both. And 50.9 win percentage. Astonishing. I mean, really. This uh, this has got to be one of the quirks of the tournament, I guess. Uh, But but yeah, phenomenal phenomenal captains, both of them. Uh, and, And yeah, I mean... Uh, if Williamson's able to achieve that, it will be something. You know, how often... First of all, you know, people don't look at New Zealand as a world-beating side. But yeah. for him to actually get the team to the World Test Championship and win that against a team like India. And now, you know, no, not, not too many people gave New Zealand a chance going into the T20 World Cup. And to be yeah. in the final, if they managed to win, really phenomenal achievement. I mean, people talk about 5 million population, 6 million, whatever. All that, that's that's not for Kane Williamson. For Kane Williamson, he's the captain of the team. He's marshalling his resources well. He, he's getting he's getting his, his 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 players to do the job. That's that's what matters. That's what sport is about. It's not about population. Everybody knows their role. Everybody does their role to, to perfection. Uh, looking forward to this one, really. One change for New Zealand, one forced change. Okay, that's what that's going to be the focus for them. Uh, before before we get there, Arun, I wanted to throw in our contest question, and uh, we've given a hint. We've given a hint here about the answer uh, in, in this show. But the question for today, Arun, is uh, and you can't answer that like like I mentioned. The question for today is that Australia and New Zealand have clashed once in a T Twenty World Cup, and who has won that match? Which team won that match? So it's a simple question, just two choices, not not too complicated. I'll repeat that question. Australia and New Zealand have clashed once in a T20 World Cup. Who has won that game? So all all viewers have to do is just answer that. Uh, go to our YouTube channel, subscribe there, like this video, and just put your answer in the comment section. And uh, Bradley signed merchandise coming up. Around. Very simple, very simple answer. You couldn't, you couldn't get Bretley signed mer- merchandise easier than this, honestly. <laughs> but, but quickly coming back to my earlier point, yes. just one change, one forced change akin for New Zealand. Uh, Devin Conway, that that really, I mean, you cannot, you want to laugh about that injury, but you feel yeah. sad for him as well. Uh, that's not the way you want to miss a World Cup final. Uh, mm. But but uh, the, the the thing is, who do they get to open? They've got so many options. They can open with Tim Seifert, who's in the reserves. They can open with with uh, Glenn Phillips, who's actually the finisher, who's playing the role of yeah. finisher these days. Uh, yeah. They can get Mark Chapman to give him the license up front and say, go, have you go, throw your bat around. So, it's going to be interesting to see what they do. Mm, interesting. Tom, Tim Seifert is, is with a good strike rate, Arun. Uh, we haven't spoken much about him, but at least they have options. So, it will be interesting to see, like you mentioned, if Phillips opens... Or they send Seaford directly to open with Guptil. So that's one change in the New Zealand lineup. Australia, you think any they won't tinker with for the final, right? They've just been such a successful team. Might as well stick to the same lineup. Steve Smith hopefully will get some runs here. Australia pretty much the same, same, same team, Akil. I don't think they mm-hmm. I don't see them changing this at all. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, the likes of Pat Cummins haven't really shown up yet. Uh, yeah. But Steve Smith as well, but come the big day, uh, they will look at they will look at uh, hopefully showing up. 
Mm, okay. So, finale coming up, I know which team, uh, you are a Kane Williamson supporter and a New Zealand supporter. So, New Zealand for you, for sure, and final favourites? I, I, well, I think so. I mean, I, I'm really torn. Uh, no favourites, no favourites. If anything, maybe Kane Williamson will get a 50 <laughs> and may the best team win. Well, I'm actually hoping Kane Williamson comes into bat like how... how uh, Last match, Mitchell Marsh came into bat in the first over, you know, facing at say 0 for 1 or 1 for 1. I hope Williamson comes into bat at that time with Mitchell Marsh and come in steaming him, steaming into bowl to him. And then he can just counter attack and get some boundaries. So that, that's a contest that I'm looking forward to. And um, I'm backing Australia actually, Arun. I want New Zealand to win, but Australia in big finals. Uh, and just that sheer pressure that they have over New Zealand when they know how to win, how, how to bully around New Zealand. So I'm just saying Australia, just a little bit of little favourites for me. Uh, that's that's my, my thought. Uh, but good fun, good, good World Cup. Uh, great for ICC to have managed to pull this event off with everything that was happening. So fitting finale coming up two big teams. Uh, we also have that contest running. So we are also allowing viewers to win some goodies here. Uh, fantastic as usual, Arun. Uh, any leaving thoughts? Uh, uh, we are going to be back hopefully at timeout with Sports Adda and keep talking cricket. But any any passing thoughts before we before we wrap up? You know, just going to going to sit back and you know, well, I can't say enjoy a, a great game of cricket. I'm going to be working, but I'm looking forward to a great contest. Okay, fantastic. And thank you so much for your time and joining us here.